Okay, so we uh, finished the last video, I think, on this slide, um, looking at the classifications of joints, um, and we hopefully identified that there are actually three classifications of joints. And there are sometimes some issues with these, people get a bit confused. What, what's so, um, on the last one, I initially said that a classification of joint would be a ball and socket joint, but it isn't, that's a type of joint. So, the, f the fixed and fibrous joints, um, there are, there's only there's a couple of examples, same with cartilaginous, but you'll find the synovial joints are the ones you really, really need to, to know, and there are lots of different types of synovial joints. So if you're looking at classifications, it's these three on the left, over here, and if you're looking at types of specifically synovial joint, you might recognise some of these, um, and obviously you need to be able to identify these in a movement analysis. So with that in mind, let's try and identify all of those on a skeleton so you can pick it out in the movement analysis. So where do you think you might find uh, fibrous joints, so fixed joints? Fixed joints, that's got to be your cranium. Yep, and it's good that you use the right terminology there, didn't say skull, so yeah, absolutely. That's Anywhere from else? the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anywhere else? Um, what about the bottom part of the spine? Yep, so the, the, the bottom couple of sections of your vertebral column, the sacrum and the coccyx, are both fibrous joints, they're fixed. Together, there's no movement really that occurs at those joints. Brilliant. So what about cartilaginous joints? Where might you find those? Um, I think that is your spine, your vertebrae. Yep, brilliant. And, and that's probably the main example you need to learn. So your vertebral column, if you just looked at a single joint between two vertebrae, there's a little bit, slight bit of movement, but not very much. And you might kind of think, well, how come you can be so bendy in your, with your spine? It's because if you add all of those individual joints up, you get a much greater range of movement. But individually, just between two vertebrae, there's hardly any movement at all. Perfect. So what about the old synovial joints then, ball and socket joints? Um, ball and socket, I think that's probably the, the easiest one. That's your hip and shoulder. Yeah, perfect. So the head of the humerus up here. Um, sort of goes in the socket created by the scapula and down here the head of the femur, the big thigh bone, goes into the pelvic socket. So you can see them there on the other one. What about hinge joints? Hinge, so with hinge joints I always think of, sort of opening and closing of a door, so thinking of something where you can only do two movements. Oh yeah, like a, the hinge on a door, yeah. 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 Um, so that I think would be your elbow and your knee. Yep. There are those. There are also a couple of more that we've identified. And I think when we talked about bones, we talked about the phalanges being long bones and there are hinge joints actually there to allow movement. Um, so that's perfect. You've identified those. Pivot joints. Um, two perhaps I would expect you to know about. Your atlas and axis, so the top of your spine. Right, absolutely. So the top two vertebrae have specific names, the atlas and the axis. The atlas actually is the top one and it rotates around the axis. It's the fifth bit on the axis. And it allows you to do the sort of side to side rotating movement with your head. And the other one you might need to know is mm. down in your arm. Mm. Radio ulna. Radio ulna joint, um, which you can identify there. And that allows you to kind of do the screwdriver reaction you might have. And in sports like tennis, where there's spin, or table tennis, where you do put spin on balls, you, you uh, have certain movement um, on that joint. Um, and those are the three main types of synovial joint you should definitely know. There are two more we've got there, just for information. Yeah. Do you know where you might find a condyloid? Uh, condyloid is between the bottom of your radius and ulna and your carpals, the top two carpals. So essentially your sort of wrist yeah. joint. Yeah, great. And gliding joints, I've just put down there. There's a lot of small short bones in your feet and your hands, and they allow very tiny sort of glider sliding movements between them. So not a great range of movement there. And this image really just gives you a, a visual of the types of movements that can happen at each of the different joints. Cool. So moving on to the sort of last section of this video, this is something you 
absolutely might get asked about in an exam question. We have had short answer questions on typical synovial joints. So the structures you can see here are things that you know you will find in your knee, in your elbow, which are both synovial joints. And what you'll need to be able to do is to make a connection between how the joint is built, so its structure, and the job that the joint has to do or the things have to do about their function. Um, so let's pick out the probably the more important ones here for us to be able to explain. Um, this one's pretty important. Articular cartilage, do you mind? So yeah, articular cartilage you have at the end of your long bones and basically they're to reduce friction between them because if you didn't have the cartilage then the bones would just grind together. Yeah, totally. It's a protective covering that, that prevents the ends of the bones rubbing on each other um, so it allows spring movement. Um, another really important one, these two really together. I've heard of synovial sciatic, yeah. Yeah, and um, basically, you know, if a door hinge, you mentioned door hinge earlier, if a door hinge is, is squeaky, what do you do? Rubbing D40. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to all the other problems. So, we, so you basically will put some oil and fluid in it to allow it to move freely. And this fluid, so the top of it, one of the jobs is it, is it lubricates the joint and allows the joint to move um, very freely or very easily. When you warm up, you warm up this fluid and it allows the joint to move more and comfortably. Um, and the, the membrane is this basically this yellow line there which allow, which uh, produces the synovial fluid. So the membrane lines the articular cartilage. Um, ligaments, I've definitely heard of ligaments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ligaments here, common confusion between lig ligaments and tendons, but ligaments are tissues which hold bone to bone. So here you can see them running down the outside of this joint. Um, you'll have ligaments on the inside of that over your knee, crossing, you know, crossing over on the inside on your foot if you have, and they basically stabilise joints, hold them in place, allow them to move in the way they should be moved, and try to restrict them from moving in the way they shouldn't be. So they're really important for injuries. Um, a couple of other tips from Bob is that if joints are quite sore, so this, this graph is here, you can see how long it's been excreting the blood. Most of it's just a cocoon, really. It obviously sort of holds the membrane and the fluid inside, but it's, it's without a layer. So the last thing to mention here uh, is a bursa, which is a sac that contains synovial fluid. And joints actually aren't this smooth and this perfect. They're often quite sort of indented, and there's a couple of um, structures that fill the gaps and, and prevent friction, and this is one of them. Okay, so let's move on remembering that you will have to answer a question linking the structure of each uh, joint, each joint element, to the job it has to do, the function it has to do. So just a, a couple of images here to show you a slightly more anatomical version. So we just saw a simple version, and these are a little bit more, you know, this is a knee, and this is a shoulder. So um, you can see the actual reality of joints a bit more complex. So the last thing we need you to do is to have a go at this question. Um, and bring your answer with you in September when you come back. So, if you were to look at this question, how would you start to interpret it? Because hopefully you wouldn't just start writing. What would you do? Um, look at what the key terms were that are telling me what I actually need to do so I know exactly what I need to write or how much I need to write. Um, so trying to split up the question into the marks for that. Are yeah. available. So you can clearly see it's a six mark question. Somewhere out of this you need to get six marks. You said there were parts, so so if I'm reading that I can see identify is asking me to, to do something but so that's one part of the question. Identify mm -hmm. three structures. Yeah, so there's three probably three marks in that. Yeah. Yep. And then describe is the second part of the question. Describe the role of each. Okay. During physical performance. So if I'm describing the role of each of the three structures, that would be my other three marks. Cool. So pick a structure, describe it, and do that tw two more times, and that's your six marks. And actually here, we'll use the mark form. So you should very much um, have all the information you need. And we'd just like you to try to learn this and write it in a very similar exam answer. All right.